Well, Christians should really balance truth and love. Hi everyone! I grew up in a Christian home and growing up my parents were always out so I was left with my two brothers. I was the youngest and only girl in our family and eventually they became my role models. I ended up wanting everything that they wanted from toy cars, basketball and even to wearing their clothes and because of that I became like one of the boys and on top of that I have naturally deep voice. So when school came, I went to a co-ed Christian school, the boys in that school would tease me that I was a lesbian. And I didn't know why they were teasing me because I felt normal and I didn't want to be different. But it became confusing because when I entered grade three, that's when I developed a crush on a classmate of the same gender. And eventually, my mom had to transfer me to an exclusive all-girls school entering grade 7, and that's where I really embraced my identity as a lesbian. At the beginning, I wasn't really vocal about it, but my parents knew about it because of the way I dress, the way I act, but they never really confirmed my sexuality, and eventually, Entering high school to college, that's where I really became more vocal uh, with my friends, with uh, a lot of people about my sexuality, except for my family. But again, they always knew about it. I guess I would say that all my relationships were serious, but the most serious would be my last relationship to the point wherein we wanted to get married and we wanted to go to the States and uh, get married there and really have a family there. We even uh, named our kids already. It wasn't really a happy ending. I mean, I felt depressed and empty when we were together and I would blame her for the things that I was feeling. I would blame her for the um, things that I felt depressed about because I want her to love me the way that I wanted to be loved and she couldn't give that so it came to a point where I really got depressed so yeah but it was a serious relationship that we dated for six years so I think that was serious my life before Christ was just really partying getting wasted I never wanted to be home. I wanted to be with my friends, to get high, to get drunk. And uh, I didn't want to be home because I felt like I was living a double life. I felt like I couldn't be myself at home. So I wanted to just be with my friends and, you know, just party and have fun and with my girlfriend. So that was my life and it was a cycle. I was blaming the external things that I was feeling and one of the things that I was blaming is that the world doesn't accept the LGBT or my family doesn't really know about uh, me and I felt oppressed because of that and I was just really desperate to stop that depression and surprisingly there was an opportunity to really come out and that was in a billboard. It was the first LGBT campaign in the Philippines and me and my ex-girlfriend were offered to be part of it. And uh, I said yes because I just wanted to have peace. And maybe coming out would just stop that depression and emptiness. So I did. And the night it was launched, it all sank in. I was in my room, I was on my bed, I was on the right side of my bed and every time I would share this story it's very clear to me, it was, it's very real. And uh, I was crying to the point where in, it was the first time I cried ever, that I was crying for desperation. I 
needed saving. And uh, in those times of me just really in my brokenness, I thought to myself to kill myself. I wanted to kill myself just to stop that brokenness, that emptiness, that depression, just to have peace in that mind. And uh, there was this prompting and this prompting was just so irresistible. It was telling me to open the Bible and I thought to myself that I've gone crazy. I mean, why would I think about the Bible right now? I'm just so depressed. I shouldn't think about that now. I should think about my problem. But this desire was just so strong that I couldn't resist it anymore. And so I opened the Bible. I had the Bible app in my phone. And as I opened it, it was the verse of the day. It was Philippians 4, 6, 7. It says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then you will experience God's peace which succeeds to anything you can understand. His peace will guard your heart to live in Christ Jesus. And after reading that verse, I felt the peace that I've been longing for for the longest time in my life. And the love. The love that is just so different. That is just so set apart. And after that, I literally prayed for the very first time from the heart I was repenting of my sins I was telling God if you're real change me and I saw how sinful I was for the very first time and I asked God for mercy because I knew I deserved his punishment but because God is love he died on the cross to save me and after that the next day, I went to my parents crying and I told them what had happened and I said I wanted to change but by the way, there's a billboard <laughs> but my mom hugged me and loved me and I didn't expect that from my mom but uh, she did but despite that, I wanted to change because I wanted God's peace and I wanted more of His love and after that, my life was never the same. During the first time of my walk with the Lord, I really struggled because I didn't really have a community. I wasn't really um, active in a local church. I didn't know any Christian friends. I only knew my friends from before. So there wasn't really someone who was guiding me in a sense so it was hard for me but eventually when I met my Christian friends that's where everything changed that's where I really they helped me point to Christ helped me point back to the cross helped me embrace my new identity in Christ and the more that I read God's Word the more conviction and my desire grew for him to be holy, to live a righteous life. We don't really know who we are. We don't even know our purpose, our meaning. And we live in a culture where sexuality is equated with your identity. But the question is, is that really who you are? Or are you more than your sexuality? Are you more than that? Well, the Bible says is that you are created in the image of God. You are created by God and for God. He is the creator and we are the creature. And apart from that relationship with God, life will never make sense. We will find this meaning and purpose with the created things that will never truly satisfy. And our true identity can only be found in Christ. And uh, God offers this to everyone, actually. It's an invite to everyone that uh, God 
came down on this earth 2,000 years ago and he became man. He was fully God and fully man. He lived a sinless life that you and I could never ever do. And on the cross, he was our substitute. He was our representative. And the punishment of God that was supposed to be ours was poured on Christ because God is love. And he rose again on the third day, defeating sin's power, which is death. And if we really trust and put our faith and repent of our sins, we will have this forgiveness. We will have this new identity in Christ. Well, Christians should really balance truth and love. And this truth is that uh, we are all sinners. You know, people from the LGBT, people who are in the straight uh, um, heterosexuality, who are struggling with adultery, with murder, greed, anger, it's the same as the people in the homosexual group. So it's not really the sin. It's really us telling them that we are all sinners, that we are all in need of saving, of forgiveness. So, I would just say to the Christians, really, to balance truth and love. And we can't also go to that side of just love and be scared to tell them the truth because the most loving thing that you can do for a friend is to share the gospel to them. It's to share them the truth. And it's not really loving if you just don't tell them the truth, if you withdraw the truth from them because you love yourself so much that you care what he or she thinks of you, then to see her get saved. So us Christians, we should always balance truth and love like what Jesus did. He dined with sinners. He made time for the sexually um, immoral people, for the people who are greedy for the people that are adulterous he made time for them he sat with them and he was just really communicating with them and having a relationship with them to the point that he was telling the truth to them that he was inviting them to repent of their sins and to trust in him so that is my encouragement for the christian community who is struggling to share to an LGBT friend about Jesus. Balance, truth, and love. Thank you so much. I hope that helps.